Welcome back to chapter 3, and I'm going to introduce today section 3.2, where we're going to be talking about how we can use the digital pins on the Arduino. So this is going to be really part one of a video, where part one of two, where I'm going to talk about how we can make our LED work with an Arduino, right? Because we worked with LEDs before, so now I want to translate our knowledge of coding, or not coding rather, sorry, wiring an LED with a 9-volt battery and translate that to working with an Arduino. So let's get started. Um, so the first thing that we're going to answer is, well, what exactly do those digital pins do? Right? So remember, the digital pins are these orange array that I've highlighted here. Pins go from 0 to 13. And the general idea is that you can think of them as switches that you turn on and off in code. There are two main states associated with a digital pin. They're called high and low, but they're basically the same thing as on and off. So you can think of it like a battery for your LED and that this is where you actually connect the anode of the LED. So that positive end of the LED will go straight into a digital pin on the Arduino. And remember, the digital pin acts as a switch. So when we turn that switch on, well, then we expect the LED to turn on, right? But what about the cathode, right? So we've covered the anode, right? The anode will go to our digital pin. But what exactly do we do with the cathode? Well, that's where those ground pins come in, right? Ground on the Arduino is going to supply that negative connection. It's similar to the negative side of a battery, right? It, in fact, it does the exact same thing. So unlike your digital pins, there's no switch associated with a ground pin. So there's no turning it on and off in code. You don't even need to write code for the ground pin. Instead, it's always going to supply the ground connection as long as you have your Arduino plugged in and it's turned on. So regardless of whatever code you write, again, there's no code associated with these ground pins. Ground will always supply ground. There's never a need to turn it on within code. And so this, this is where the cathode of the LED goes, okay? So that's sort of the general idea behind basically taking our positive and negative end of the battery from the circuits that we worked with before to now basically saying, okay, what is what are the new positive and negative ends that we're going to be working with, okay? So in order to actually sort of understand this, the first thing that we're gonna do is instead of starting with the Arduino, let's just go ahead and recreate our, answer, our circuit from before, right? Where we wired an LED. So I'm gonna grab a nine volt battery. I'm just gonna rotate this real quick. I'm going to grab an LED. Oh, I don't want that. LED. Let me zoom in here, okay. And then let's see. Oh, we need a resistor. I can't believe I forgot about that. Uh, let's see. And we used a 450 ohm resistor before, so we're gonna use exactly that. Change this to 450 ohms. And then from there, it's just a matter of connecting these wires. So let's use a red wire to connect the resistor to our positive end. And then let's use a black wire to connect the black wire. And then we're gonna click and bam. Okay, so this should be wired up. Now if I hit start simulation, in fact, we do have a light and cool. All right, so this circuit, we're gonna be taking, oh boy, did not want that. Let's move this here. Okay, we are going to be taking basically this battery and this circuit on the right here. Actually, I can move this over a little bit. We're gonna take this and we're gonna see, all right, what exactly, what components of this do I steal and where exactly do I put everything? Okay, so for the purposes of this video, I'm going to connect the LED to pin seven on the Arduino. Okay, you can use whatever pin you want, but I'm going to use pin seven. So I'm actually just gonna, can I do cut? Yes, I can cut and paste on Tinkercad. So I'm gonna cut and paste my LED and put it here. Okay, now we know the cathode, right? Well, let's start with that. The cathode goes on the ground side of the LED, right? Cool. All right, well, that, that positive end's done. That, that, that was pretty easy, right? And then let's just let's just get the resistor going. We know the resistor, oop, I don't want black wire, I want red. We know that the resistor, which again, is just a fancy wire that goes into the anode, right? Is going to go straight into our digital pin seven right here. 
And well, that's about it. I mean, that's literally all we really need to do in order to basically transplant, if you will, our circuit from the battery to the Arduino. So now the next thing that I wanna talk about is kind of a clever way of sort of wiring this LED so that if you ever do work with the physical circuit, you have an easier time wiring this because in actuality, when we have a lot of things to wire and when we're really testing something, we actually, it's actually not a common practice to take a component and wire it straight into the Arduino. Instead, we use basically a giant extension cord. And instead of plugging everything directly into the Arduino, we usually plug in our components into that extension cord instead. And so that extension cord, in Arduino terms, is called a breadboard. So let's go ahead and grab that. So we're gonna use a small breadboard for this, and I'm just gonna ro rotate this. Okay, so this might look really intimidating at first, but it's actually very simple. This positive end, well, that's where you're gonna put your positive voltage. So this is really where you take your five volts and your 3.3 volts. That goes on this red side here. Now the nice part and is that once I wire a five volt pin, I can pick any pin I want, does not matter. Once I connect the five volts to the breadboard, all of these pins, every single one you see only on this side, not on this side, just this left side, all of these now are five volt pins. So I plugged in one wire and now I have all of these. You can kind of see how it's an extension cord, right? Where, you know, an extension cord, you get, we use one outlet and then you got a whole bunch, right? The idea is the same here. I used one pin, now I have a whole bunch of them. Now I can do the same thing for the ground too. It's pretty cool. So I just take this ground wire, connect it to whatever one I want. Now all of these, including this one here, doesn't matter, all of these are ground. Isn't that cool? Now the same rule applies for these pins, but it's a little bit it's a little bit funky. So what's actually gonna happen is if I connect, let's say, now for these, we usually put things like digital pins and we don't really, um, or actually it's not just digital pins, but it could be any pin, but the rules are a little bit different. So what's, let's just say I wanted to connect pin two, right? I wanted to extend all of pin two, right? So. I could have multiple basically pin twos, if you will. Well, so let's say I connected it here. Now the thing to keep in mind is all of these pins now are going to be affiliate are going to be the same pin, pin two. So it's not in this direction, just so you don't get confused. When we plug it in here, it's not going in extending in this direction, it's extending in this direction. That's why when you hover over and you look at the Tinkercad animation, you see the pins that are highlighted in green are the ones that are actively extended. And so these pins highlighted in green are all the same pin. It's again, so it's in the, I guess in our, from our perspective in the horizontal direction as opposed to the purely vertical direction. So that's the main distinguisher there. So if you, so when we wire our LED, right? And we wanted to use a breadboard, I'm gonna get rid of these pins here. Let's actually go back to this perspective. I kind of like that a bit more. Okay. So, oops, not that. Okay, so I'm gonna drag my breadboard here. Now I'm actually just going to take this and put it over here. Okay, so the first thing we wanna do is we, we want a ground connection, right? So I'm actually going to first things first, um, plug this into the ground here and extend my entire ground pin. I can change the color of the wire like that. Okay, I mean, that's done, right? Now, the next thing I'm going to do is plug in my LED. Now. Remember, we want two different pins. So I'm going to need a, basically a column from now off from our perspective, right? A column for each pin. So let's say I just plug it in here, right? Now I have this pin, like these five pins basically, and these five pins to work with. Now obviously we only need to work with two of them, right? So the first thing we need to do, well, is to give it a ground, like a cathode, right? We wanna plug in the cathode, which is very simple. Just take your extended ground and connect it here. So now you took your extended ground and you connected it here. So all of these pins will now get the ground connection. Now we can do the same thing with the cathode end. Well, with the cathode, right, we have a resistor. And if you notice, the resistor is kind of big. So instead of extending it vertically, what we can do is go horizontally, extend it that way, and then connect something to this pin. 
because we know the resistor is a fancy piece of wire, right? So we can, let me do this and then we can kind of trace through it a little bit. So let's connect this to pin seven. Okay, let me just straighten out my wire a little bit because I like it when it's straight. Okay, perfect. So if we look here, right, we have a wire incoming from the digital pin. So all of these pins got extended, which means that this resistor is getting that signal. And then I connected that resistor to this pin, right? Which means that this pin, so this column and this column are now extended with the same pin, right? Because the resistor is going over, skipping these, and then going all the way here. So this entire column now has connected to digital pin seven, because we go from here, then we follow the resistor, go all the way here, and then we follow the wire, which takes us to pin seven. So that's basically what's going on here. Now, resistors, uh, sorry, not resistors, breadboards are nice because it is super easy to just wire up multiple components. And one of the nice things is if you say had multiple different LEDs, you don't need to really shove multiple wires into this ground pin, kind of like how you had to do before with your previous project, right? When you had to multiple wire LEDs, or sorry, when you have to wire multiple LEDs, what you needed to do was sort of basically just kind of shove all of your pins into that one ground pin and you have to do this or into the ground connection of the, in this case, the battery. And well, there's no need to do that anymore because in a physical sense, it's actually very impractical to shove a bunch of pins into one port. You don't really have the space for that. So instead we extend it all using a breadboard. So yeah, that about wraps up this video in terms of wiring and using a breadboard. Um, once again, I highly encourage that you make sure you really understand this breadboard idea because you need to know where the wires are being routed from. And again, think of it like an extension cord. Ask yourself, where is this coming from, right? So for the cathode end, well, I got this wire here. The wire is connected to ground. Ground is coming from this ground extension from the Arduino. Okay, so I know that, okay, this is going here. Now all of these pins are ground, so if I take one of these ground pins and extend it here, now this entire column is ground, which means that this cathode will get the ground connection, right? Now same idea, right? Okay, I've got this column here, and I got this resistor. This resistor is going to have the same connection as this wire. Where is this wire going? Digital pin 7. So let's backtrack. Digital pin 7, this entire column is affiliated with that pin now. So that means if I get follow this resistor, that means this resistor this entire is going to make this entire column pin seven. The LED is connected to the same column, so I know okay, the anode is going to connect to digital pin seven. So that is that. Um, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we start to talk about how we write code for this LED. See you then.